So now we have all of the tools that we really need to simplify some fairly complicated looking expressions. Um, to be honest, we just have to watch for all of the different pieces to put together and then make sure that we follow nice legal rules as we put them, put them into practice. One of the best suggestions that I can give you in terms of things that I usually do is number one, watch for negative exponents. Um, if there's negative exponents in the problem, rewrite those right away. Uh, that generally just keeps you out of a lot of trouble, so rewriting negative exponents first is usually a good plan. Um, the other thing that I like to do is then simplify the numerator and the denominator separately. If there's stuff that you can do, I definitely want you to do those um, to combine things as, much, as best as you can. And then the last thing is and then you can actually uh, divide or simplify, divide, simplify, cancel, however you want to think about it, things that are in both the numerator and the denominator. Uh, your final answers should only have one of each variable when possible. Um, and really, if there's no addition or subtraction, that should always be possible. So you really only want one of each variable, and for our purposes, we want no zero or negative exponents in our final solution. Uh, the other thing to kind of watch for is pluses or minuses really mess things up. And so you've got to really rethink things if you see pluses or minuses in there because they add complications to our exponent rules. All right, so with all of that stuff in mind, let's tackle a few examples here and see how we do. When I look at number 27, I notice that there are no negative exponents here. So I'm going to just go ahead and try to simplify the numerator and the denominator of my fraction. Um, and then see what I can combine from there. When I look at the top here, I have 5xy times 2x. I can multiply the big numbers together. 5 times 2 is 10. I have an x times an x, so I can add those powers together. Remember, this is like x to the first power and x to the first power here, so when I add times x times x, I get x to the second power. So that works out pretty well. There was also a y up there on the top, and that needs to stay along for the right up there in the numerator. When I get down to the bottom, uh, I have a 6 in x squared and a y to the fifth. There's not really anything I can do with that uh, at that point down there in the denominator since everything's a different variable. All right, so at this point I look at my problem and I'd like to now uh, divide, simplify, cancel, reduce as much as I can. And there's actually quite a few things that we can do here. First of all, notice that we have, just in terms of these big numbers out in front, those are just like a regular fraction, and 2 will go into both the top and the bottom there. So if we divide 2 into 10, I get 5. I divide 2 into 6, and I get 3. That simplifies a few things there. The next thing that I notice is I have an x squared in a, on the top and an x squared on the bottom. So I can just cancel those out all together. All the x's on top and all the x's on the bottom are completely going to go, and my final answer won't have any x's at all, which is fine. When I get to the last one, I have y on top and I have y to the fifth on the bottom. If I think about writing that all out longhand, I'd have one y up here and then I'd have one, two, three, four, five y's down here. One of the y's will cancel, so one of this y will cancel and leave me with four y's left on the bottom. So what I end up with is a five on the top, three on the bottom, and then y to the fourth power on the bottom as well. Um, if you use your subtraction rules and you totally can do that, you'd end up with y to the negative fourth, and then you'd want to write that y to the fourth on the bottom um, so that you could rewrite it without any negative exponents. But that would be your most simplified answer there. All right, with number 28, there's a lot going on. Notice that there are several negative exponents, so I'm going to want to take the time to rewrite this expression, and anywhere that I have a negative power, I'm going to rewrite it as a positive power in its reciprocal position. So let's go through and see what that'll look like. On the top, I have 14. The x to the third is going to move down to the bottom, and then I had a y on the top. All right. So again, the negative 3 becomes positive by moving it to the denominator. Now I'm going to rewrite the bottom. On the bottom, I had a 21. Then I had an x to the negative fourth, which will become positive up on the top as x to the positive 4. And then I had a y to the negative 10, which will be, 
become positive by moving it to the top, and that'll be y to the positive 10. So I know everything looks messed up, and there's a lot of stuff going on here, but what I have managed to do is get rid of all the negative exponents in my problem, and then put things together in a way that I'll be able to look at it and try to combine things that are, are, are relevant that I can do. At this point, you can start canceling, but I try to simplify, if I can simplify the top and the bottom down to look a little bit more normal, that's usually what I'll do at this point. So here I've got a 14, that's the big numerator, so I'll leave that out in front. Uh, I like to write them in alphabetical order, so I have x's next, there's an x to the fourth, and then I have a y and a y to the tenth that I can combine. So y to the one times y to the ten, I can add those powers and end up with y to the eleventh. <laughs> So 10 y's from there, 1 from there gives me 11 altogether. On the bottom, I like to write the numbers first because it looks like that coefficient out in the front of the term. So I have 21 and x to the third um, comes next. So we have that there. And so now I have simplified the numerators and the denominators as much as possible. But now I need to make sure that my answers are as simplified as I can. So I see the 14 over 21 and notice that 7 will go into both the top and the bottom there. And that will leave me with 2 thirds. So you do want to simplify those plain numbers out in front. And the next thing I want to do is make sure I've got uh, x's on both the numerator and the denominator. So I should be able to um, simplify that. If you think of it this way, I've got four x's on the top and three x's on the bottom. So three of those x's on the top will cancel out, leaving me with just one behind. And you can kind of verify that x to the fourth and x to the third when you subtract gives me x to the positive one. So that ends up with as x to the first on the top. Uh, the y to the eleventh was on the top before and it'll stay there. And so what I end up here with is two x y to the eleventh. Uh, this You could write that as x to the first, but something to the first power is not necessary to write. And then I had a 3 left in the denominator. So that would be my final simplified solution after going through and applying all of the steps. With problem number 29 here, I have a big old expression being taken to a negative exponent. That power is out here on the outside. I, you can simplify what's inside first, um, or you can rewrite this without the negative exponent. It really doesn't matter too much uh, as long as it's either just simplifying the inside or just rewriting the exponent. I'm going to rewrite the exponent first because I don't like those negative powers very much. So this whole fraction will become positive by looking at the reciprocal of it. So the 5xy will end up on top, the 3x squared y will end up on the bottom, and that will make my power a positive 2 instead of a negative 2. Now, at this point, there's a couple of different, we can either simplify the inside and then square it, or we can square everything inside and then simplify doesn't really matter too much. Uh, you know what, let's just go ahead and simplify the inside of this um, expression here first. Notice that the y's here are going to cancel out, which is cool. They're totally gone. And then I have one x on top and two x's on the bottom, so one of those x's is going to cancel. So the one on top will cancel with one of the ones on the bottom, and I'm just going to be left with five on top and three x on the bottom and that expression is all being squared. I do want my final answer not to have any um, parentheses in it. So we'll go ahead and take everything to that second power. So the 5 gets taken to the second power, which gives me 25. On the bottom, the 3 gets taken to the second power. 3 squared is 9, and the x gets taken to the second power, which is x squared. And that will be my final simplified solution. All right. In the last example here, you really need to be careful. Notice that we've got pluses and minuses here, and they really mess things up in terms of how our rules are. You can't just cancel a group of things here and a group of things here, because this value here is affecting all of these values up here. You see how that fraction bar line goes all the way across? We actually looked at a problem very similar to this when we did the distributive property. Remember that we had, we wanted to kind of think of this as 1 over 5x to the third times, so that was what's being multiplied out in front because this is this whole big parentheses thing. So this is 5x to the fifth minus 40x to the third plus x minus 20. So you can kind of think of it as this big old distributive property thing, but that 5x to the third power has to be divided with each one of these terms here. So another way you can write this is like this, 5x to the fifth over, so we're multiplying it by 1 over 5x to the third, so that's this, that will give me this. 40x to the third times 1 over 5x to the third will give me that minus 4x to the third on top with 5x to the third on the bottom. Then plus 
I had the x up on top times 5x to the third on the bottom, and minus the 20 up on top with the 5x to the third on the bottom. So this, I, this here is kind of like this distributive property idea, or you could think of it as just dividing every single piece by 5x to the third. Once we do this, we can simplify each individual term because, again, those pluses and minuses separate all of these things out, so we actually have a lot of individual pieces that we want to reduce or simplify. When we look at the first one, the fives will cancel, and three of the x's will cancel with the f and leave you with two behind. So from that whole first expression, what I end up with is just x squared. Um, the whole denominator ended up getting canceled out, and all I was left with was two x's from that. For the next one, notice all the x to the thirds cancel out. That's fine. And what I'm left with is 40 over 5, which actually goes in evenly. That's just minus 8. When I get to the next one, I have an x on the top and x, three x's on the bottom. And so one of that x there is going to cancel out with one of the x's on the bottom. And so I'm going to be left with 5x squared. But it is in the denominator, so make sure that you write that as 1 over 5x squared. And then for the last one, uh, I have a 20 on top and a 5 on the bottom. I can divide the top and bottom by 5. That'll give me 4 over 1 from that. So what I end up with here is 4 on the top and then 1x cubed on the bottom, which you can just write as x cubed like this. So this would be the best way to simplify that original expression. And essentially, again, all that we did was we see the pluses or minuses, which kind of tell you danger, danger, danger. We, can, we need to deal with each individual term um, as an as an individual group. So we want to simplify the 5x to the fifth over 5x to the third, the 40x to the third over 5x to the third each one. And then we just simplify. Basically, this turns into four little simplifying problems that we can then use to get to our final most simplified solution.